Christian fascist cult to be investigated for Japanese ex-prime minister assassination. So this is wild. I've been waiting to talk about this for a while. Recently, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida ordered an investigation into a South Korean religious organization known as the Family Federation for World Peace and Unification, more commonly known as the Unification Church or as quote-unquote Moonies, amidst a growing scandal between his party and the church. The Unification Church is notorious for its bizarre teachings, abusive practices, and mass weddings. Prime Minister Kishida instructed his education and cultural minister, uh, Kieko Nagaoka, to provide the ties between the ruling Liberal Democrat Party, or Democratic Party, or LDP, and the church. This decision came after the assassination of former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. 41-year-old uh, Tetsuya Yamagumi, Yamagami, the suspect of the killing, said he assassinated Abe over his apparent ties with the church. According to Yamagami, the church defrauded his mother into donating around 100 million yen, or roughly $672,000 U.S. dollars. Uh, Tetsuya targeted Shinzo Abe because of his perceived sympathies to the Moonies and his grandfather, former Prime Minister uh, Nobusuke Kishi, helped the Unification Church expand in Japan in the early 1950s. An internal survey of the Liberal Democratic Party discovered that almost half of their legislators had some connections with the church. Prime Minister Kishida pledged to remove the party's ties to the church. The Unification Church, which has around 100,000 active members in Japan, could lose its tax-exempt status depending on the result of the investigation and a court ruling. Hey, can you break this down a little bit? Okay, so let's back up. You, Most people are probably aware that, or heard a few months ago, that the former Prime Minister of Japan and the longest-serving Prime Minister... His name is Shinzo, Shinzo Abe. He was assassinated. And this is very shocking because, like, there aren't any handguns in uh, in Japan. Like, this kind of thing is very rare. And as this was investigated, the role of the Unification Church started to be revealed. So here's the backstory. The guy who murdered Abe, his name, his last name is Yamagami. So let's just call him that. Yamagami is from a family that was members of the Unification Church. And because of the abusive practices of this cult, his mother basically gave everything the family had to the church. And so that this man could not attend college, like it had a really devastating impact on his family. And basically he he says that it ruined his life. His original intent was apparently to assassinate the current ruling leader of the Unification Church. The current ruling leader of the Unification Church is the wife of the founder who died uh, like about 10 years ago. The guy who founded the church, his name is Sun Yun Moon, which is why the followers are called Moonies because they're like named after him, right? Is this okay? One question: Is the whole thing just one church, or are we talking about two different churches? So, yes, but the, what complicates it is that the Unification Church goes by many different names, and they have many fake organizations to hide their activities. They have many. They also they have they have a billion dollar like multiple billion dollar network around the world. Okay. They own properties around the world, and they own the United States newspaper, the Washington Times. Um, okay, the, so we have a unification church, which is being called a cult, right? Yes. Uh, and they're called Moonies. The people in there. The, the kind of a pejorative term or nickname for the okay. members are called moonies. But why is the church being investigated when the church was the one that was attacked? Is the one the church was not attacked. the one that was attacked. 
I mean, the person is attacking people because of them being in the church. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Okay. Funnily enough, this is the exact same propaganda that the church is using to cover their oh. ass. Um, so, so backing up and going to the current day. So this guy has been like the, the murderer has been, you know, very badly impacted by the activities of this church throughout his life. He wanted to go target the current leader. He couldn't because she's not traveling into Japan as much anymore after the pandemic. So what he wanted to do instead is he realized that Shinzo Abe's grandfather was had a large role in the church expanding in Japan in the 1950s. And I can get into that because it's actually kind of crazy. And then he later discovered that Shinzo Abe himself had some connections or was a sympathizer to the church. And this enraged him. So this is how he ended up choosing Abe as his target. Um, and what this ended up doing, I mean, like, yes, someone is being targeted for their affiliations with this church, but it opened up the broader conversation in Japanese culture about what actually is this church? Like, what's going on? What are they doing to their members? Like, what what actually is happening here? It, it, it started to become a, an actual genuine question. And then people started to realize how legitimately politically influential this organization is within Japan. And it has become an issue where it's extremely unpopular in Japanese politics right now to have any form of affiliation with the Unification Church. And it was discovered that nearly half of the, what was it? Um, of the, of the legislators from the LDP, the current ruling party, had some ties or connections to the church. And so they basically like flushed out an entire cabinet to try to get rid of these connections, put in Wait, a new so cabinet. Jap there are a lot of people in the new cabinet that still have connections. So the Japanese people, like Shinzo Abe was part of this church. He wasn't part of it. No, no, no. He was not part of it. He was not a member. He just like would show them support or thank them for their political okay. support that they would give him. And he had sympathies, da, da, da. But you would think that the people would like, it's, I'm just, it's amazing that the Japanese people would have the opposite reaction that I would think because like Shinzo Abe was killed for his association with this church. And the Japanese people are like, let's go after more people who are associated with this church. I would just think like, I would just think that you would be sympathetic because this man was killed for his association with the church. So I, f I would think that the reaction would be like, hey, let's not demonize these people who are, I mean, pe the Japanese people, didn't they like Shinzo Abe? Like, I mean, he was, he was very controversial. So okay. that's its own thing. And like him receiving a state funeral was hugely controversial. Like, I don't want to get into those politics so much. It's, okay, I'm I understand what... the perspective you have, but I think if people know about how bad and evil like the organization of the unification church right. is you wouldn't have as much sympathies okay okay how bad are they like they oh my god it's bonkers so it is a straight-up cult it was founded in the 1950s in south korea and it was founded by sun Yun moon sun Yun moon is genuinely believed to be the the second coming of jesus christ he is nice. supposed to be the literal oh. messiah. Was this the same guy that caused a whole bunch of people being killed? Like there was a mass death. Like I know somebody from South Korea that acted like he's the second coming of Jesus that caused mass executions and killing. Is the same guy? I I don't think so. I there hasn't really been mass suicides or anything in um, the Unification Church that I'm aware of. You might be thinking of Om Shinrikyo, um, but. Because, you know, I'm I'm so, like, obsessed with cults and stuff like that. But, so, they believe that this, like, aging... Well, I mean, he's dead now. This Korean man is, like, the messiah. And that his whole thing is that he's going to come and turn the world into a united family that is then going to be sinless and, like, take over the world. And it, it's there. there's these weird, like, parallels to Islam in some of the teachings... So they have this belief that 
Sun Yun Moon's family is literally like a pure family that is specially chosen by God to be like a representation and model for everyone else. They are like a sinless family. And it ri- reminds me so much of like the Ahl Bayt, like being Masum in, in Islam. I was like, oh, this is very similar. Um, they're also very racist. They basically think that Koreans are, like, the superior race. And then after that is, like, Japanese. And then after that is, like, East Asians in general. And then it's, like, white people. And it just goes downhill from there. And in general, they've, for decades, they've had extremely abusive practices. They're very deceptive in how they recruit people into the cult. They, um... They do tons of extremely abusive and destructive practices. Like oftentimes when people join, they have to give over all of their savings to the church. They have to give up everything. They have to give up their name. They have to cut off the ties of their biological family because now they're part of God's sinless family. Um, They are implicated in um, labor trafficking of, of their members. And when it comes to these mass weddings, they don't think that people are basically smart enough or godly enough or spiritually clean enough to choose their spouse for themselves. So for a lot of these mass weddings, and they're really like a marriage ceremony, they're not technically legally binding, that happens later, but the someone's spouse is chosen for them by Moon or by the leadership. Like they, they don't even get to choose their own spouse. Because they they are not, you know, worthy or they, they're too corrupted to be able to make such a decision themselves. So, I mean, there's so much that goes into the Unification Church. Like, their global network is crazy. They own arms and defensive, mini- like, um, manufacturing. What? Yes. They have connections to the CIA. Not even kidding. And they have been used historically since the 50s to oppose communism. So they, governments, including the United States government, has used the Unification Church for fighting communism, but it often comes in the form of just putting, pushing right-wing authoritarianism. Like, I can't get into it too much, but the ideology of this group is legit, straight-up fascist. And they go they go to extremes with this and part of their they couch it oh it's family values it's family values but really they just hate gay people they fight against lgbt rights at every force because they think that lgbt rights is communism and it it goes it goes really deep so they've been throughout in, in japanese politics they've been used and mobilized as a consistent voter base and politicians will cater to them in this way and this has been a real contention particularly in japan in terms of gaining lgbt marriage equality recognition which has been like a really hard ongoing process there i really thought japan would be immune from such nonsense you know why i didn't know and well i mean i mean I just thought that they are they ever since Shinto was like a state religion, they now realize how much you, you I, I don't know if you know, but Shinto was a religion before like the Americans came and fixed it, but they just replaced it with something else because back then it was like a very religion was holding back Japan a lot. And I think that you would just once you realize how much when you pass that and you saw how much your country grows. You would think like, yeah, let's not do that again. Um, but well, it's complicated not. because in Japan, there are only like 100,000 active members of the Unification Church, right? But mm. they are an extremely wealthy organization, extremely corrupt, and they... Like, it's, it's a very insidious organization, and because they have so much money to throw around, because they extort so much money from their members they have a lot of clout because of how much money they have available to them. Um, And one of the things that I was reading about is that they could get shut down based on the fact that they're known to 
basically provide a lot of fraudulent services to people like spiritual exorcisms like all this stuff and there has been a precedent of um in japanese law you are able to shut down certain religious organizations within very specific circumstances and the, there's only been like two um examples of this one of them was om shinrikyo which should be shut down because they are legit biological terrorists like om shinrikyo did a horrific sarin gas attack on the tokyo subways the descript like it's 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 horrific what happened with Om Shinrikyo. So they they definitely need to get shut down. I mean they're terrorists. But so um where is this there was another organization that got shut down for fraudulently selling people goods and services and stuff. And so they might be able to do something similar here. Do you really so do you think this is promising this investigation into it? Is it gonna lead to anything good? I hope so. It, it's become so politically damaging for the L, um, LDP that they have to do something. Like, the current prime minister's ratings are in the low 30s, the lowest it's ever been. So they they really need to do something because it's so toxic in the, in the Japanese public opinion. Hmm. Um, okay. Um, this is a very... I don't know about any of this. So this is, thank you for educating us. So, Honestly, I was just excited to talk about the Moonies because like, I'm such a nerd and <laughs> it, it's a fascinating organization. I mean, extremely abusive, but they're actually genuinely very influential around the world, but people don't really know that much about them. Like if you're in, if you are in your sixties, like you would be more familiar with the Moonies because that generation saw kind of the rise of the moonies a lot larger and then now they've kind of fallen off the public radar so there's a certain generations of americans in particular that will like 100 percent know like what i'm talking about but if you're kind of not within your 60s or 70s you're going to be like what what the hell is the unification church but there's a huge degree of notoriety for you know previous generations i'm still freaked out by the fact that the dude cross they put on a cross in jerusalem is now like having this effect on japan like how do you guys like like if you're japanese like you really like where is your like you guys are supposed to be racist why are you thinking what? about this? <laughs> like why are you guys like you're japanese why do you Shut think up. this jewish jewish guy in the middle east on a cross is all of a sudden has what does that got to do with you like take some pride make it japanese like at least when you were shinto there was like some i don't know this is a what is very it? strange argument from you <laughs> no i'm just like like sometimes i feel like a people in like indonesia i would like this dude in the desert in saudi arabia like that's something somewhere and like now in indonesia people think that this guy this guy was their prophet same thing about christians in like philippines or in japan or in korea like how on earth do you think this has anything to do with you guys well, I mean, oh, yeah, Arvin, no. it's very different because, like, the Abrahamic faiths, have, well, not all of them, Christianity and Islam, have universalizing messages. That's the whole point. So the geolocation of their founder is pretty irrelevant. Well, not pretty. It's, it's less relevant to the actual theology. Because they're evangelical. They're inherently I know, but, if, but they're Christian. They believe Jesus died for their sin and stuff, right? I'm yeah. just thinking, like, it's just so bizarre that in Japan, like, in this modern world, like, these people have, like, the most advanced technology in the world. And this over there, they think the sky over there, like, in, like, 2,000 years ago, the sky was open. I just don't know how, like, how this well, happened. That's Somebody less come... confusing to me than thinking that this aging Korean businessman who got put in prison for tax evasion is the Messiah. That's more confusing. Like, this old fat Korean dude, like, that's more confusing to me <laughs> than the mm -hmm. Jesus part. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially yeah. within the Unification Church, like, that's where the real emphasis is, is on Moon himself. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> is seriously religion is the fact that religion is still relevant today is sometimes I think about it like it just boggles my mind. 
Like this is the same human race that has figured out what has happened in the fraction of a second after the beginning of this goddamn universe. And they're like, oh, we're still like, oh yeah, this guy died for our sins. This, this carpenter was died of, oh, it's just like, I don't know. I don't know, I'm just ranting. Uh, get my best selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.